How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 10. We are on the road once again. This is like the third game in a row, I think. Uh, at a 4-2 Texas State. So, it's been a while since we've played a decent team. However, they are C overall across the board. Um, who have they beat, though? They beat Navy. They beat an FCS team. They lost to a ranked Texas Tech. Beat Georgia Southern. Lost to Appalachian State. And beat South Alabama. So... Definitely there. Well, I guess we're probably, I guess, right on par with Texas Tech for uh, their biggest competition this season. Texas Tech managing to beat them 49 to 10. We'll look to match that. Um, and we'll just hope for the best. We'll head into our recruiting here, though, at the beginning of the week and uh, see how this goes. And it's looking pretty solid. Seems like we're about to pick up the 77 overall true freshman linebacker, Neil Boone. He is just about to commit. I mean, 94% locked and we have uh, the lead far and away. David West is kind of coming towards us. A lot of these guys, it's looking really, really good for us. Uh, Maurice Stingle, he's okay. 69 overall at the wide receiver. Uh, it looks like Virginia's kind of trying to fight back, though, so we're going to give him 350 points, basically the max that we can, and then let's go to the bottom of our board and see what's going on. Jamie Brooks is that full, book that, full back that we really want, um, but it doesn't really seem like it's going to be possible to, to catch up to Kent State or Northwestern, so we're going to remove those 500 points and take Jamie off the board, which is a shame because he looks like a great fullback. Jimmy Massey, uh, I don't, I mean, now that Clemson's going for this guy, he's only a 63 overall tackle. We're not going to waste our time. We can let Clemson give him the points. That saves us another 500 points for a tackle that isn't necessarily the best that we've seen. Losing points to Buffalo here with Michael Fogel, a 66 overall athlete, and the 67 overall tackle, Adam Hill. We are also losing points to Pitt, so it's kind of difficult here at the bottom. Um, let's see what we can hold on to. Alex Moore is 68 overall at free safety. He can get one of those 500 points. And then leaves us with 500. Um, we need to continue offering scholarships to everybody who doesn't have a scholarship offer yet. And then we have like one, four, four, one visit to schedule. Let's get that. It is for Michael Fogel. We'll send him... We'll send him to the Appalachian State game just so that we don't get locked out too early against Buffalo. And then there are seven players that need scholarship offers. So we'll do that just for all of them. Uh, we could end up with two fullbacks and we might end up cutting one, but that's fine. Joe Bush, the six foot one, 62 overall fullback from Florida is going to get a offer. Sean Franklin, 67 overall corner. He's a little bit small, 6'1", 181 pounds, also from Florida. Uh, you know, I wish that we, he was a little bit taller, but, you know, maybe he turns into something. We could use the depth. JJ Barr is another fullback that will get a scholarship offer. Another kid from Florida. Goodness, he's 63 overall. So, I mean, the drop-off between the fullback that we wanted and Jamie and the other two is pretty big. Uh, but it's always nice to have just a decent guy on the on the roster. He doesn't need to be a world beater. Uh, how about Desmond Douglas from Washington, D.C.? The defensive tackle. 67 overall. He is a bust, but 67 overall is still good enough for us. 6'6", six six, 270 pounds. And then our final three scholarships. Let's see. A kid from Florida, a kid from Florida, and a kid from Wayne, New Jersey. Uh, it's the athlete in Michael Fogel, the tackle in Adam Hill. And the linebacker in Calvin Rutledge. We already looked at the other two, but 62 overall for Calvin. Not the best, but again, we'll just offer these scholarships so that we don't have to worry about it in the future. And now we actually, let's see, we have three guys missing off the board. We're just going to find three guys to scout them. All right, so we have found our three guys. Uh, not sure how we'll feel about them. Another guy from Washington, D.C., and Eric Howard. He is a defensive end. We've got Cole Lambert, the guard from Tennessee, and another defensive end, Ashton Keith from Alabama. Let's see. They didn't look necessarily like they were all going to be great, but uh, Eric Howard, 70 overall, goes down to 63. Makes sense why he hasn't been recruited heavily because he's a bust, but he'll stay on the board for now. Cole Lambert at 62 overall goes up to 66. I kind of expected that. 
And Ashton Keith, I imagine, is a bust at well. No, he's a gem 79 overall for the defensive end. Uh, I'm not sure that there's a great chance for us to pick him up, especially Notre Dame has 360 bonus points, but we can hope for the best. We get 90 bonus points. <laughs> it's going to be a battle, but who knows? Maybe that's like a end of the season. We put all like 10,000 of our offseason points into him, but it's a pipe dream uh, as far as I'm concerned. How about at a top 25? I don't think that we looked at the end of the last episode to see stuff. Iowa State did beat West Virginia. And they now play number six, Oklahoma. So we will hope actually for the Sooners to win that one. Just because we don't like uh, undefeated teams. I want them all to fall if possible. Uh, any other losses or big games? Arizona State lost to USC. Georgia lost to number four, Florida. Uh, Minnesota lost to number three, Michigan. It's their second loss, and <laughs> uh, that's it. Um, others receiving votes. We have Oklahoma State and TCU dropping out. Curious. I imagine that means at least one of those two took a loss. And our game last week, the nail-biter that shouldn't have been a nail-biter against Arkansas State saw us getting both the offensive and defensive player of the week. Uh, in the Sun Belt, Derek Bush on defense, the corner with the pick. I think he might have uh, he might have done something else besides those six tackles. Uh, and Grayson McCall picking up a lot of yards, uh, helping the offense get to that 35-point mark. But enough of all the non-game stuff. Let's get into this one. Right away, we can see we have a six overall advantage with a uh, bigger spread on offense and a closer uh, one on defense. Only two overall in our favor, but across the board looking good for us. I said last game that we were going to wear the black helmets, uh, and then we didn't. So this game we actually will. And Texas State will be wearing... I think Texas State actually is updated with uh, the mod. So let's just scroll through their stuff because that sounds right to me. Um, the gold, the maroon... And the white helmet. And the maroon, the white, uh, or, and white jerseys. And the gold, white, and maroon pants. So, and then also they have their, uh, their gloves that are, uh, custom as well. So, that's, uh, that's looking pretty solid. I did like their home jerseys, but, uh... Yeah, we'll let them wear the standard homes because those are pretty sweet. All right, so as we load into this one, uh, our offense still pretty middle of the road. Theirs is a little bit worse. They're probably going to pass for a million on us, though. And defensively, they're not too bad. Uh, let's hope that we can run the ball well like we have recently. They've got guys visiting. We'll try to ruin that. Their best player is only in the mid-80s, so the talent's not quite there for Texas State, even though they're 4-2, and two, and they do have... A wide receiver with a broken femur out for the season. So that might help us. It's a bit of a shame for the Bobcats. It's a night game here in Texas as we are at Bobcat Stadium. And we're going to go with that. Tails. Uh, never mind. Tails does sometimes fail. So we're going to start with the ball. Diggs is back to return. And as they kick this one off, I want to ask... Uh, Everybody, or, or thank everybody, I guess, for the continued support. Numbers are actually ridiculous, and Diggs! Oh, I thought he was free! Doing a great job on the return, giving us a uh, decent amount of field position to work with there. After the tackling in the last game, we are going to go ahead and make the in-game adjustment to avoid going for big hits, just to make sure that we uh, maybe, you know, secure those tackles more often. And then uh, we'll just... I don't know, hope that these guys don't have like a world-class running back that they can go to. We're going to throw here on second down. We've got Reese, and we've got enough for a third and one there. On this third down, we'll just hand it off up the middle. And the gap was there. Reese picks up the first down. We cross midfield. Going to the air on first down. Let's go with the nice little dump-off passes. Get the positive yards and make them... Uh, you know, a little bit easier, more susceptible to the run. And we'll see what Reese can do on second and four. Gets the ball. Decent looking blocking. The hole collapsed pretty quickly there, but third and inches. 
And we're going to be in fourth down territory for the rest of this drive, I think. On third and inches, cutting it north early. We get the first down, but there's a flag, and I imagine this is holding. holding. So we're going to have to pass here. Our right tackle got called for that one. Bit of a disappointment. Looks like we're going to see some pressure. Uh, maybe not. Oh, this was not enough. We found Bedgood, but he's going to be just short. Uh, we're going to run for this. Probably a fullback dive. Let's see what Shamari Jones has on this fourth and inches. The fullback doesn't get a lot of touches. The line gives him just enough. He gets the yard, and the offense can stay on the field. We'll try the play action on this one. We might have just thrown a pick, though, and we did. Oh, a little bit disappointing for me. Uh, I saw there was a ton of guys. I thought we could sneak it in there to Javon Hiley. Uh, great play from the linebacker there, and, well... Can't be giving the ball up. We'll open this one up on defense now. Uh, a little bit sooner than I wanted. But in the man and... Hey, we got to tackle the first time out and they lose four yards. Looks like maybe they're going to be passing quite a bit on us. Four wide again here on second and 14. They will step back to throw. And the quarterback's going to scramble. He ran into his line and we get the sack there. It's a loss of six. So we've got ourselves a third and a mile. I'm honestly looking for the screen to the left side here. And it won't come. So they're going to throw. No, wait. No, it went to the other side. Spillum misses the tackle. Shelton's going to get stiff-armed, but get him out of bounds, and it's fourth and seven. <laughs> Running the counter here on first down goes nowhere. His Reese got popped and lost a yard. And now we'll try to throw. See if there's anything over the middle wide open. We find Dion found the ball was a little bit behind him. Gosh, they got hit really hard again, but still picked up 18 yards. The Bobcats are just bringing the hit stick so far. Looks like a safety blitz. Can Reese get away from it? Well, he does enough, and he gets five yards there. Marching down the field here. I really want to, like, look towards the end zone, but they're doing a pretty decent job defending it. Never mind. No, wait. They adjusted better than I thought they were. <laughs> I almost threw another pick. All right. What am I doing throwing downfield right now? They're obviously ready to cover it. As this third and five, we're going to run it. I don't feel confident. Bring uh, the tight end in motion. And hand it off to Reese up the middle. And he got pushed forward. So it's fourth and inches and we can go for this. I don't like that we're having to use these fourth down conversions, but... We might as well, and on fourth and inches, Grayson on the QB sneak picks up enough and again keeps the drive alive. First and ten. We'll go back to pass again. Maybe a bit of a stupid idea. And, well, we got rid of that one just in time. Oh, thank goodness that's not a sack. Let's see if we can find Reese White through the air on this one. Two out routes. Might be enough as well. And Reese is wide open, holds on to it, and falls forward for the first down. So, oh, no fourth down needed this time. We're going to have to be running a lot of short plays if we want to uh, sucker them in to have a chance at a long ball. So we'll just continue to do that. And if we can pick up seven yards of carry, that's fine too. And just like that, that's going to end our first quarter. Uh, Not the way that we wanted this game to start. It feels like we should be in control. But it's tied up at zero all. Uh, we need to get into the end zone here. Second and three. We've got Tyson Mobley immediately. Oh, I hit the wrong button, but it's Dion Fountain. He was wide open in the back corner of the end zone. I didn't mean to press circle, uh, but it works out in our favor when we get onto the board. Uh, okay. How about this? Number six, Oklahoma now up 14-0 on Iowa State. So we take a 7-0 lead. They're going to go five wide to open up this drive. Question is, can we stop it? Run a wide receiver in motion. Maybe a little bit too much of a shift there. And they're going deep. No way he gets it to his man. Although Brady McBride had his man open, just couldn't find it. And we are really lucky that uh, this is a second and 10 instead of a tie ball game. Going with the run, maybe the mid draw on second down gets only three yards. And we can expect the pass now on third and seven. It's going to be another screen. Can we get there with Shelton? First broken tackle, 
Second broken tackle, but we've slowed him down enough. They still lose a yard, and the defense holds again. If the defense could have played like this last game, uh, it would have been a blowout. <laughs> oh, whatever. It's, it's happening in this game, so I'm going to be happy with it. And Diggs with a very returnable punt. Can we switch the field here? No. Didn't do it soon enough. Oh, gets us good field position, but not even across midfield. And we will just start to march down the field on this one. Try to utilize the running game as much as possible. And hope that we can continue to fall forward when they're tackling us. On second and eight, Reese will get this ball. Trying to follow the blockers. We bounce it out towards the edge. And again, he falls forward, which is getting us so many extra yards. And it's third and inches. This is a bit risky, but we'll try the read option on third down. McCall didn't get the block. I thought maybe we would pick it up. We lose yardage. It's fourth and two. The good news is that we've been going for these, and I'm going to continue to go for these as we find Javon Hiley, but he's not far enough downfield. The, the coverage on that mid-screen just seems to be too good. We're not leading our receivers enough as well, so uh, that play can work. We just have to figure it out a little bit better. That turnover on downs has given Texas State their best field position of the game is they're going to hand this one off on first down. And <laughs> I missed him. Thankfully, we only give up two yards. I can definitely feel the difference in talent in this game compared to the last, though. Um, our defensive line actually getting, doing a decent job. And hey, how about that? A tackle immediately as they find the running back for six. We're going to blitz on this third and one. It's going to be a handoff. We hit him about at the line of, uh, to gain, but he gets the stiff arm cheese for seven. Going to go ahead and continue to bring that pressure. First and ten. They step back to pass. Spill him way out of position. And Shareed can't be caught by Sidney McRae. And it's a tie game here. Uh, 257 left in the half. It's now 21-7 in the Oklahoma-Iowa State game. And hindsight is 2020, but really shouldn't have brought that blitz on the last one. Uh, Diggs, maybe you can answer back quickly for us. We will take the return, and he just outran that man. He took a bad angle, and Diggs is gone. Nobody's going to be able to catch him this time. I think it's his first kick return for a touchdown of the season. We take it 130 yards, setting or tying an NCAA record, and just like that, we score to make it 14-7. to Five wide now for Texas State as our defense has to come right back out onto the field. And I baited him into the out route, but I couldn't get the pick. Oh, I played that one perfect. And I'm going to continue to stay five wide on this second and ten. Trips to the right. It's going to be a QB blast, and he got some good blocking. He's still on his feet. Quarterback breaking tackles left and right, picking up 24 yards on that play. That is unacceptable. As on second and ten, they are going to go to the air again. And over the middle, they had two guys. They find Barbie, I'm assuming that's Marcel's last name, and they get 23 more. And this really isn't going how we would hope. Going back to pass again, and I just didn't have the speed to catch up to the out route, so they get seven more. There is an injured player. Is this their quarterback? Oh, that could be big. So the backup quarterback has to come in now to finish this drive. If they, they've they just gotten outside the red zone, they're going to hand it off, which is wise. We leveled Brock Sturges, but he still managed to pick up enough. That first down, they'll go to the air again. This is another handoff, and again, a decent hit. Lock now at two minutes. They take their first time out. Their starting quarterback is still out right now, so... This could be a decent injury. Another run here. Oh, man, he ran into his blockers and lost a yard. Good catch uh, to tackle him for Sidney McRae. It's third and nine from the 11-yard line now. We'll see if there's anything that we can do to stop this. We know that it's going to be a pass. They will step back to throw. And wide open in the end zone is Drew Jackson. So they tie it up once again with a minute and 34 before halftime. Uh, well, shoot. I accidentally hit the wrong button and we went back for an onside recovery. I'm going to return this with Diggs just to see what happens. You never know. Oh, he broke a tackle. <laughs> I feel like I was very close to taking that pretty far. Instead, uh, terrible field position for the offense and they have to get it done. We have all of our timeouts. 
Uh, but we also just have not been good throwing the ball so far. We're going to open this drive up with a handoff to Reese, who picks up a decent chunk, and we'll be in the hurry up now. Just trying to get this defense uh, out of sorts as they are chasing us down, and we get sacked. They take the timeout with a minute and 12, and it's third and 11 for us. We are only one of four, 25% on our third downs today. That's not going to get it done. Uh, Bedgood is not going to have the pass find him either. So a minute and eight, and we have to punt this one away. This is not going the way that we'd have hoped, and this is a bad punt as well. Very returnable with blockers, and he's breaking tackles left and right. They have great field position to take the lead before halftime. And in addition to everything, they get the ball to start the uh, third quarter. So we're all over Hopkins there. We get the quick tackle. The clock will be moving, but still give up five yards. Really want to see the defense do something. My man got, or I got burned by my man. Thankfully, this backup quarterback missed by a mile. And I'm going to make a very, very risky decision on third and five. We're bringing a blitz. Trying to do something. It's not enough. Oh, bad tackle from me, but just uh, couldn't quite get there in time. They get the first down. We're going to try another blitz here. This could be very, very dangerous. Need to get the safety in the middle linebacker up. Pressure getting to fit, and we get the sack. Oh, he tried to fight through that, but we eventually pull him down. And seeing as this is a backup quarterback, I'm actually going to continue to bring this pressure. See if we can't uh, put him in an uncomfortable situation, and with... 11 seconds, 10, 9. We're going to let them run the clock down here. Actually, I'm taking a timeout. I know this might be stupid. But I want to have a chance to return a kick to retake the lead before halftime. And that kick is good. Too easy. Uh, Oklahoma now up just 14 against Iowa State. And we are now down 3. Game's not showing the score, but that's fine. Uh, we know what it is. 17-14 digs needing to get a good return here. Clock has expired on the half, and he can't do it. So we're going to be going into the locker rooms, down three, giving them the ball. Uh, why does this always happen? This is so stupid. We should be winning right now. Come on. No reason to go into any more depth than that. Uh, let's just kick this one away and see... How the cards fall because I just, uh, I see no reason why we shouldn't win this. Backup quarterback is still in on the game. I'll, uh, I'll check after this one to see what has happened to the starter. They're throwing a, maybe a risky throw, but finds his man on the out route. And, uh, there it is. Brady McBride, the starting quarterback, has a strained shoulder, so he's out for the rest of this game. I'm going to continue to try to bring some pressure. I know that blitzing, for the most part, has not worked for us so far. But I want to continue to see it. Second and two, they go back to pass. Quarterback eventually running, and we get the sack. I thought that he should have had a guy open there. Really hoping that the coverage holds up. I'm going to use her spill him out here towards the edge. And we're there for the stop. Fourth and inches. Thankfully, our broken tackle is picked up by uh, another teammate. That's enough. They've come out in the pump formation. I don't expect them to fake this. We haven't seen a fake from the uh, AI yet in this dynasty. And it's not going to start right now. This one is being punted away and will be able to be fielded by Diggs, who got a block and a couple of yards there on the return. Not the best field position, but we got five extra. Offense really struggled in the first half, so I want to see them come out and uh, just march down the field for an easy touchdown. They need to show that they have it, and I, I don't know why I don't just run it with Reese every play. Picked up seven more there. Second down, we're going with the read option. I expect this to work better than the first time we ran the play, and we're going to... Well, I was going to follow the blockers, but uh, that gap just closed real quick. First and ten, I'm going to make the mistake of passing. And let's just jump dump it out to Reese, who can lose some yardage. <laughs> Well, it was a completed pass, but he still lost one. Our offensive line is just really not all that good. Let's move Isaiah Likely in motion. Try to run this one, and White up the middle. I mean, I guess they're decent at creating gaps for the running game, but just can't pass block. 
It's third and five now, and we're going to go ahead and go with the AI play call on the slip screen. Reese has blockers, but not enough to get that first down. Fourth and three, and I think once again, I might be going for this. You know what? We're going to try to tie this up. The wind not really helping us. This is a 63-yard attempt, but we got all of it. Can the wind push us in? No. I don't even think we had the distance. Oh, it would have been nice to put that down the middle, though. Let's see. Is this going to give us an angle that helps us know if we would have had the distance? No, we were short. Well, at least I know we could probably hit a 60-yarder uh, so long as there's no wind coming at us. But the defense is now going to be asked to do a little bit more. And uh, they gave up eight yards on that run. Not my finest decision making at the moment. Second and two, expecting this one to go to the running back. And it does, but he goes to the edge and uh, he doesn't pick up the first down yet. And we're going to bring just a big blitz here. I'm calling this a run to the right. It's a handoff. They go to the left and he gets the gap. Dang it. 12 yards there. If we give up a touchdown on this drive, it's going to be very problematic. First and 10. There's another handoff. Apparently, we're running nowhere near him, and he got eight more. Why does this always happen? It'll just get to a point in the middle of a game where the uh, defense can't do anything to stop the run. Or the short pass, for that matter. Maybe we're just that bad at defending when they show their hurry up. Expecting a run on this one. It is a handoff, and thankfully we pull him down quickly. We're at a point where we are going to need to hold these guys to a field goal on this drive if we want anything good to happen to us. But if we just don't even cover the middle of the field, we have zero chance of stopping them. That might be the most open man I've ever seen in this game, as this one is almost caught in the back of the end zone. Quick second and goal, though. We're going to make a very, very questionable call here with the safety blitz. It's a run. We're there to get the stop, but we don't get the stop. We finally find him at the goal line, but we gave up three yards. That cannot happen. Expecting this one now to go to the running back. It's going to be a pass. The quarterback got hit as he was throwing, and he missed his man. So fourth and goal. I think we might see a field goal. I don't trust these guys, though, so we'll be in the uh, safe zone. Just trying to protect against a fake. And the kick is up, and it's good. So we're down six with a minute left in the third, but at least the defense held right at the goal line. Diggs back again. Already has one ridiculous return on the day. Can he get another? Could we go back to last season where our special teams just saves every game for us? Diggs, oh my gosh, gets caught just at about midfield, but again, we start with good field position. We'll open this drive off with a bubble screen to our tight end, and that was stupid. I saw that he was covering him. I shouldn't throw that one. We only have 56 yards passing on the day. That's not very good. Reese White on second down. We're going to give him the handoff, and oh, our left tackle just not holding his block long enough. We're one of six on third downs on the day. And we've got a third and 11 to try to convert. Let's see if it can happen. Isaiah likely got it. That has to be enough. Just barely. We finally get our second conversion of the day. And this is likely going to be the final play of the third quarter. We're going to hand it off to Reese and just let him run forward. Get some positive yards on first down. And we can go into the fourth quarter. Not feeling too great. Um... Down six, we do have the ball, but it just our offense has been bad. We'll see what we can do, though, here in this fourth quarter. We desperately need a touchdown. We can't afford anything else, and we can't afford that. Reese just lost a yard, got popped in the backfield. And now we're dealing with another third down. We'll go five wide on it. Grayson waiting. We have Bedgood holds on to it through the contact. No, he fumbles the ball. There's no way he wasn't on the ground. There is no way that that is a fumble. Absolutely zero chance. That should be a first down for Coastal Carolina. Look, full possession of the ball. Yeah, he hits the ground and then the ball pops out. We're challenging this. Thankfully, we don't have to. Goodness, the refs may be coming to their senses. They're going to look at it. He's on the ground for like a whole minute before the ball comes out. That's, that's our ball. Yep. Thank you, refs, for not 
utterly screwing that one up. All righty, first down, five and a half minutes left in the game. Let's go with the quick pass to Javon Hiley, who can fall forward for a quick eight. We'll try the read option now on second and two. Five minutes to go now. Grayson going to hand this one off to Reese, who cuts it back to the right, picks up the first down, which will stop the clock. And we will look to the air on this one. First and 10. I'm lobbing it up. The end zone. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yikes. All right. I don't want to talk about that play. Second and 10. Uh, we'll go back to the air. I'm looking for Fountain again. I don't like it. Let's just throw the safe pass to Likely. Unfortunately, stepped out of bounds. Only got two yards. Third and long again. Continue to just, like, screw this up. Looking for the comeback routes. Or something. As, no, we fumble the ball. The lineman picks it up, and it's going to be fourth and 18. I think we have to kick this field goal. Please don't miss. Oh, I tried. But the field goal is good. It's a three-point game with 4.14 left. Our, if our defense doesn't get a stop, it's game over. It's time for us to see what the defense is going to do on this first down. They motion the running back out of the uh, pocket, and... Nobody really seemed to know where that ball was going. I can't help but feel like we got very lucky on that play. Forces the second and 10 now. And again, they motion the running back out of the backfield. And, well, they find a man on the little, like, corner route for a quick first down. So the man coverage isn't going to work. Let's try using Sidney McRae on this one. First and 10. Can we do anything with a defensive end? Oh my gosh, we got to the quarterback immediately. He still found a man for five yards, though. Man, I'm going to try that one more time. Was that a fluke, or did we really just uh, get in and pressure the quarterback immediately? This is a handoff where we got there. I should just always use our defensive lineman. It's third and two, though, and that's not what we're going to do. We will look to stop this one as, wow, literally nobody in the area. And they get another first down. This is very disappointing. First and 10, 320 left in the game. I'm expecting a lot of runs. This is a screen. It's a broken tackle, and finally they get dragged down. That could have been a loss of yards, though. Disappointing, to say the least. They will, on second and five, start burning some clock, it looks like. Um, which, if they're going to do that, we're going to use her a blitzing linebacker and just try to shoot the gap here. A little bit unfortunate that we might have to start using our timeouts, but maybe we can get the stop here. Well, we got... We shot the gap perfectly, but oh, it's not going to be enough. Still forcing the third and five, though. The blitz got there quick. Uh, we just didn't get a whole lot of pressure out of it, and now it's third and five. We're going to hope that uh, they don't just destroy us. Kind of expecting them to run this one. Uh, again, they're burning the clock. I don't know why I didn't think about that, but I was going to save the timeout anyways. They'll snap this ball with uh, two minutes to go in the game. And this is a very crucial third down. Can't really afford to give anything up. They do run the screen. I wasn't paying attention. We drop them for a loss, and we'll take our first timeout. Fourth and seven. They might not be able to make a field goal here. And they won't. It's the punt formation. We've gone punt return safe zone just to make sure that they don't go for this. And they're going to kick this one away, trying to coffin corner us. A little bit of a shank, but should be inside the 20. So with two timeouts, a minute and 53 on the clock, and a quarterback who has not passed all that well today, can we march down the field and score? Finding Javon Hiley early. We'll have to go in the hurry up after a five-yard pickup. Second and five now. Remember, all that we need on this one is a uh, field goal. We're going to throw this up for Isaiah Likely, who comes down with it and then dropped it. Couldn't hold on through the contact at midfield. That is so, so brutal. Now we've got a third down to deal with. See if we can maybe find Javon Hiley on the little curl route. He's open. He's going to hold on to it. That'll keep the drive alive while stopping the clock. Really hoping that we find something. They weren't set. We find Isaiah Likely. Really hope that he could pull through that guy, but only gets seven yards, and the clock is moving. And 
Now on second and three, we'll step back looking for Isaiah again. Maybe, oh, what am I doing? Oh, I thought I was th throwing it over the safety, but we didn't put the ball up high enough and that's gonna be game. There's nothing that we're gonna be able to do here with a minute to go. It, it will take an actual miracle. Expecting these to just be runs, we will bring a bunch of pressure and we need to just tackle him, guys. Oh my gosh, first time out taken, 55 seconds now. Our only hope is that they throw an incomplete pass on this second down. But it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And I need to let him score. No, what are you doing tackling him? Oh, 50 seconds, that's GG. Well, literally the only chance that we have is if we allow them to score the field goal. But they're coming out in the victory formation. So this one is over. This is such a frustrating loss because it should have never happened. But two interceptions, myself and Grayson McCall were just atrocious the entire time. And we're going to see one more knee here. But, uh, man, it's a shame. We're going to lose our ranking and uh, take our second loss of the season to Texas State of all teams. Just uh, disappointing. Offense just could not get it done, uh, especially through the air. So, end of the game. We fall to 7-2 and two on the season. Three turnovers for Grayson McCall. Is it really three? Goodness gracious. Oh, it's going to be 20 to 17. Disappointing. Uh, but hopefully we can go home. We've been a, you know, road game after road game after road game. Maybe we can get home and bounce back, get some recruits to commit, and just uh, put this one in the rear view. I've got, uh, I've got no excuses on this game. We didn't give up a crazy amount of yards. Kept him under 100 rushing. Under 200 passing, uh, but the turnovers were costly and just making some stupid mistakes. Shouldn't have gone for the 63-yard field goal. Shouldn't have thrown a stupid pick to end the game. Um, so can't get it done. Just uh, just a weird one, and hopefully we can shake it off. Uh, Diggs tried to save us with the returns, but it just isn't enough. And uh, Jeffrey Gunter, only positive thing on defense apparently was the one sack from him. We'll, I guess, advance the week here towards week 11 where we've got Appalachian State coming to town and hope that maybe we get a couple of commits um, before what will end up being a very, very big week for us uh, in terms of recruiting. We have a ton of visits coming this week 11, so just got to hope that that goes well. Bunch of guys ready to visit. Did anybody lock us out or commit elsewhere? No, but you could just see. Recruit is scheduled to visit this week like 20 times there. So that'll be good. We did get an NCAA record, so that's some nice XP. Uh, Appalachian State 4-3. and three. We are 7-2, and two, and we are no longer ranked in the top 25. League course is still on our side. We look like the better team, but are we going to be able to do it? With just a quick look at ESPN here, we can see that Iowa State did lose to number 3 Oklahoma. So only two undefeated teams left in this top 10. A 8-0 Miami and an 8-0 Michigan. Uh, Michigan will play a number 12 Penn State. Oklahoma plays a number 8 West Virginia. Number 4 Florida plays a 14 South Carolina. Iowa State plays a uh, number 16 Texas Tech. So a lot of chances for uh, ranked teams to lose. Could be interesting. Auburn and Georgia play. And, uh, I mean, are we still receiving votes? We are. We're, like, currently ranked about 30th. We need a little bit of luck, but uh, if we keep winning, I think that we have a chance to just eventually make our way back into that top 25. What a letdown of a game. But, uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to end it there. Won't be able to bounce back and redeem ourselves until the next episode. But unfortunately, sometimes you take a loss that you're not expecting. So as we wrap this one up, I, of course, want to say thank you guys for all the support on the channel and the series. It means a ton. And uh, if you're not currently subscribed, please scroll down, hit the subscribe button, and feel free to hit the like as well. We are also on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. And you can find links for our Twitter and community Discord in the description below. But for this episode, that's going to be it. So thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.